Welcome back to Custom and John Teach Google Ads. Uh, John, what are we talking about today? All right, so today we're gonna go a little bit more philosophy based. Um, and it's just because new campaigns we take over or current client questions are all kind of focused around what I believe is like the old school way of not only just Google ads, but marketing in general. Um, and the topic is to how to use Google ads to convert or to sell a user based on their intent or what they're looking to achieve, not who they are. Um, I think a lot of times people are like, well, you know, if we get the person with the job title of, you know, doctor, they're going to want to buy this. Well, no, that just means that's who they are or they're male or female, or they live in a certain area. Um, I see a lot of times that new campaigns are bidding very, very broad. Uh, and I'll just use an example, like the keyword shoe. A shoe is not an intent. Shoe is not meaning that someone is looking to buy a shoe. Um, that means that they're just, they're looking for a picture of a shoe or they want to know what a shoe looks like, you know, who knows. Um, but you want to focus on what the person is looking to do or what the person is actively researching or planning and then put yourself in front of the person who is not necessarily in your target demographic, but they're looking for that, that solution, that product, that service, that company, whatever it may be. So put it by putting yourself and I'm thinking at Nasili, think about like a, like a computer or maybe a credit card. If you, if you sell stuff, a credit card's wandering around looking to buy something. Um, that's how you have to think about the users is they're not necessarily, you know, not the right fit or not the right target demographic or um, not the right age, um, whatever it may be. We have to kind of stop thinking about Google ads as a outbound marketing strategy based on this avatar and who they look like and what they smell like and what they like to you know play you know where they like to play basketball it's it's not it's nothing about that because i think that there's so much convoluted data out there that you start to identify audience members that you had no idea were even in your audience but they do convert and so i kind of want to walk through a couple instances of that um today and actually let me uh let me do this i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen let's see here what I'm hearing you say is we just need to get out of the machine's way. It's not that demographic information isn't important. It's that Google does that for us already. So let's stop trying to preempt it right. and go to the goal. Right. Or, or think about ways to pull yourself out of that competitive ecosystem. Um, if you and 10 other big companies are all targeting a user on one channel and you're looking to make any sort of mon money or scale, um, starting out, you're, you're going to be met with a lot of like walls. You're going to be met with a lot of challenges that are probably not over or not easily overcome unless you have a large ad spend. So when you think about, well, you know, I don't want to go after every a hundred thousand people that look and, and, and are described about this way. I want to find the one person that's looking to buy something, um, and put my, my ad in front of that person. Uh, and I don't really care how old they are or what they look like, as long as we can use Google to say, this is what a person is actively researching or planning the purchase of. I'll just use e-commerce as an example and put your ad in front of that um, because that's the person Google says, we know everything about this person. They will probably buy something from you. Um, and that's what we want to take advantage of. So I'll give you an example. So here's a client. Um, you'll see like Beats and Bows, but the client's name is essentially hidden. But you can see that our campaigns that contain Soleil, they started, you know, we kind of got ramped up on the 26th. So I'm going to look at the 26th here, for example. And I'm going to go to, you know, let's say now I'll just do yesterday because today's not full. Uh, and then I'm going to compare that to the previous period because they were running ads before. Now, I can't show you the, the campaigns. I'm only going to be filtering by ours. But you'll see here, this is the total account. So this is what everything was running. And if you look at the cost, you'll see that we actually spent 30% uh, less. We spent $400 less than what they were spending before. And the conversions are up uh, 63%. The cost per conversion is down uh, 57%. The conversion rate is up 113%. And the return on ad spend uh, is up you know, from 150, where they weren't making any money. Now it's 350 in the first was is two weeks. Well, can I um, make a point there, John, just to, to make it more mm -hmm. clear, this is a client that was running Google ads without us. Mm -hmm. Did they have an agency do you know, or were they doing this in house? They were doing it in house. They're doing it by, by hand. Okay. And then yep. they handed it to us two weeks ago and we've had this for 14 days. And in that time we've been able to make all of the improvements you just recognized. 
Right, using the philosophy that, that, I, that I'm sharing with everyone on this video, um, conversion value is up 61%. So they, they used to make 2,100, now they made 3,500. So they spent a lot less, made a lot more, ROAS is in line, conversions are up, conversion value is high, uh, everything is looking good. And this isn't me, me boasting, but what I wanted to share with you is the way that they were marketing before was heavy shopping ads. And they're going up against some pretty big names. Uh, obviously, we know Bose and Beats are, are speakers, um, pretty large company. And they're not trying to compete with them. But what they were thinking about is people who are interested in the Beats and Bose accessories would probably also be interested in our product, along with all of our other competitors sitting right next to us on the search engine results page. And what that did was it would, it would put into a context a very, very narrow, very short and very broad keywords, for example, beats. Um, and now they don't sell beats, they don't sell bows, they sell accessories. But when you had the keyword beats, that's not intent. That's not something that is looking to buy an accessory for a beats speaker, or they're not looking to, to um, you know, they might be actually looking to buy the speaker itself. And so what we did is we shut off the multiple search campaigns, the multiple display campaigns, and the multiple standard shopping campaigns and used the kind of programmatic, I guess, I don't like that word because it's, it's not a real word, but programmatic targeting basically, um, which means target the user based on what they're actively researching or planning. And then you'll find out that you have no competition because you're going to one person. You're not going on a search engine results page. And that's what I mean by, by using the algorithms in order to find the user not say, well, this keyword doesn't really work that well. Um, well, that, that's, that's not true. One person using one keyword and another person using that same as that keyword will have different intents, but is the keyword correct? Um, if I'm looking for an optometrist, I'm gonna look for best optometrist near me or most reviewed optometrist near me, uh, not just go to the Google and type in the keyword optometrist. So when you look at what people are actively researching or planning or what they're trying to find, using smart shopping as an example, using that, that bidding strategy that says, we're not gonna show this ad in front of the user, even though that person looks, smells, feels exactly, exactly your target demographic, they're not gonna buy today. So we're not gonna show an ad in front of them. And it completely changes the paradigm. I'm not gonna spend money. I'm not gonna press user with the ad. I'm not gonna drive to the website and I'm not gonna fail at the campaign that day because Google were leveraging what they know about these users already. So, and a good example of this, if I click on this campaign here and go to Auction Insights, we have no, we, we don't have enough activity of competitors um, to, to find any sort of, of campaign. Um, uh, let's do Auction Insights in here. You own this area 100%. <laughs> so that's it. That's awesome. So how do you do this out. outside of e-commerce or can you? Is it smart shopping only? Or are, you, are you thinking about like DSA? Like what works? for non e yeah. campaigns in order to do exactly what you were talking about. Yep, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because I do have to type into another competitor's, or not another competitor's, another client's name in order to get to there. So I'm gonna reshare here as soon as I set up. Um, but here's a good way of looking at this too. When you're using keywords in order to identify, here we go, got it here. When you use keywords to identify the audiences, um, using keywords with high amount of intent. We call qualifiers for lead generation, for example. And lead generation could be, um, you know, not using very, very thin keywords, not using very skinny keywords, I like to call them, where it's just, you know, water bottle, keyboard, you know, whatever it is. I'm just looking at things around here and naming names. Um, but when you look at the type of searches, when you're looking at qualifying searches, buy, shop, online, hire, find, you know, near me, um, local, best, uh, top reviewed. What, those are just nine examples off the top of my head that would all have a intent, best keyboard. You know, that for example, that I'm looking for the best keyboard. Why? I don't want to know what the best keyboard is. I'm looking to buy, uh, buy the best keyboard online. I mean, that's perfect. Um, or hire the best attorney uh, for DUIs is an example. Not just DUI attorney, but hire the best DUI attorney two things happen. You add more keywords so that your competition actually becomes less because not the, comp the competition may not be bidding on that exact phrase, but also your cost per click goes down because now you're in a less competitive ecosystem and your cost per click reduces. And what you'll find is something like this. Now, this is a company that has male wash products. 
I, if I said from, you know, the last two weeks, would home and garden be your target demographic for a male wash? Hmm. Probably not. It's interesting but, because you're, you're just, I mean, we really need to set aside all of our assumptions here because you're yeah. absolutely right. And I see this happen over and over and over again with clients where we come to the table thinking like, oh, clients are this person. You know, it's a 50 year old male who's, who, who likes to hunt or whatever. Or, you know, to your point, their interests are this, their segment is that. And then Google starts running in every single time. And as often as not, it's a joke more than anything else. You'll just be like, hey, man, look where these conversions are coming from. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and lo and behold, we're taking surprise every single time. Yeah. I mean, if I said a male wash, think of like Old Spice. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, an Old Spice. Would you, If I said, okay, we're going to be selling a male body wash. Um, we need pet lovers, home and garden, uh, movie lovers, and, <laughs> and do it yourselfers. They probably wouldn't have hired us. They probably would have fired us. They probably would have said, no, you guys are nuts. We're not going to go after those people. Why, why would we do that? Yeah. When you look at lovers. Con- yeah. If it, pet lovers has a 15% conversion rate. It's it. Think about it, if a traditional way of marketing, I would have said shoppers. Perfect. Shoppers is awesome. Shoppers, 7%. Mm. <laughs> okay. So people that buy stuff don't buy our product. Um, it's just the funniest thing too. Health and fitness buffs. Yeah, that probably were, would, would work really well. And they do 13%, but they're not as good as the home and garden, <laughs> which doesn't make sense to me. But no, that's you what know what? That makes sense to me perfectly. This makes men smell better. So women are seeing these ads. They're like, my boyfriend or husband definitely needs that. <laughs> Yeah, right. And then you just open up a whole other kind of side of this is, well, who actually is your target demographic? Um, when you when you say, who, who's going to Google right now and typing in best male wash? The home and garden. I did not know that. I would have missed out on a, on a, a group that converts at an 18.46% conversion rate. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, it makes perfect sense, man. It's, it's actually stop making assumptions. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, everybody comes to the table thinking they know who their customer is. And sometimes you're right. If you've got a really ultra specific offering, uh, you know, if you're an arborist, you have to have people who have trees, but yeah. you don't necessarily know all the people that have trees. You just know the people that you currently serve. So, so much of that is recency bias. Set that mm-hmm. aside and let Google show you how market, how big the market really is. Right. We're not putting TV commercials. We're not, I mean, and the other thing that's so funny too, is we find that children's YouTube channels work extremely well for converting people who are looking for uh, web-based managed services. Why? No idea. I, we even started to track that. That was in another video. We even started to track that in sort of our UTM parameters for our, I was in the other video that we use UTM placements. And so that advanced strategy, it works really, really well. We have a 70% conversion rate from those users completing all the way through the funnel. Um, but you know, if I went to them and say, you know what, kids, YouTube game or YouTube apps, <laughs> they're like, no, we're not going to market there. So you guys are fired. Um, and so I think it's like, it's almost like a, a, uh, oh man, it's not like an aha, I told you moment, but it's like you, you, everything that has been thought about before we did this is kind of null and void right now. Um, and we just have to stop thinking about, you know, how we run a TV commercial or a billboard or a radio or a, t- or a newspaper advertisement, that old traditional way of marketing, marketing one-on-one that was taught in the seventies, eighties, nineties, early two thousands is all debunked now. Um, so stop kind of going after who they are and go after what they're looking for um, or, or their actual activity. And Facebook's been doing this recently. Um, Facebook now works really well when you strip them most of your targeting out um, because Facebook says, we know who to put the ad in front of. Um, so the, that whole Facebook marketing where it's like, give that person with a job title with that household income that lives in you know this zip code and uh, has been to this website three times. That just doesn't work anymore. It's just not the way that that technology is moving. So hopefully this is uh, inspiring to someone to say, you know what, I'm going to stop getting frustrated with the figuring out where my market is and go after who just would like to hire me or who would like to buy one of my products um, and start thinking that way. That's awesome. I love it. If you're watching, you have questions, uh, hit us in the comments. We'll answer them. Uh, Don't forget to like the video, share it with your buddies, anybody that you think would benefit, subscribe, hit John's bell. Yeah, hit my bell. (laughs) John's bell. And uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow with another Wicked Smart Google Ads video. Yeah, get in the car. Get in the car with the bar and the mash. (laughs) Yeah.
a young club. A young club. All right, Charles. Yeah. See you next time. Thanks, everyone.